Good morning. We're moving on to lesson 9.3. And 9.3 is all about using our mental math to multiply. And mental math means being able to do this in your head. Um, because a lot of times we do a lot of calculations in our own brains and that ends up being more efficient and more and quicker than um, writing out all the problems. So my first question is this, using pages 277 and 278, which I have posted right here, um, could five blue jays have a greater total mass than an Atlantic puffin? Could their total mass be less than a puffin? Try to do this in your head. Okay, so what we need to first figure out is we do need to know how much one blue jay can weigh. So blue jay is right here. So blue jays can be from 70 to 100 pounds. So that means five blue jays, well five times 100, five hundreds is 500. So they could be 500 at most. They could also be five times 70. And five times 70 is going to be my fast fact of five times seven, which is 35. So it could be 350. So this is the range. Notice I did both those calculations in my head. Five is one of those friendly numbers that helps me multiply more easily in my brain using just my brain versus writing it down on paper. So now I need to figure out com and compare this to an um, Atlantic Puffin. Okay, so Atlantic Puffins can be from 400 grams to 650 grams. So if my blue jays weighed together um, 500 grams, then yes, they could be bigger than Atlantic Puffin because if my Atlantic Puffin was 400 grams. If my um, five blue jays weighed only 350 altogether, it would indeed still be less than 400. So it could be both, um, five blue jays could be bigger than one puffin, but they could also be smaller than one puffin. Today, we're gonna practice doing um, more problems like this using just our brains. So it is time for you now to get your math journal so that you can look at pages 277 and 278 as I um, work on them here. So I'm going to erase my work so I can have this as a workstation and come back to it. Oh, so let's see here. Sparrows can be 25 to 40 and morning dove can be 112 to 170. Okay, so um, I'm going to solve it right here. So if I have five house sparrows, they could be as most as five or as much as five times forty, because that's the biggest end. And five times forty is two hundred, because five times four is twenty, and I just need one more zero. And two hundred would indeed be bigger than a morning dove. House bears can be as small as twenty-five grams. Twenty-five grams times five would be two hundred fifty. No, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, my brain. I was like, what is going on? 25 grams times five is like 20 times five, which is 100 plus five times five, which is 125. And it could indeed be less than a morning dove if the morning dove was bigger. So the answer is yes to both. What is the total mass of six 10 gram black capped chickadees? What is the total mass of six 12 gram black capped chickadees? Okay, so I need to find six 10 gram black capped chickadees. Well, a 10 is a really friendly number. I know six times 10 is 60. I'm going to use this problem, this answer, to help me with the next one. How can I use this problem here to help me figure out the answer for this one? Total mass of six 12 gram. Um, chickadees. Well, if I know that 6 times 10 is 60, hmm, what can I do? What could help me figure this out? Well, one thing you can think about is that 12 
is like 10 plus 2. So I've already taken care of the 6 tens there. And so now I need just 6 twos. So I can add that and that's going to be 72 grams. Um, another thing that you can think about doing is um, you can think about that, you know, that 5 12 times is 60. If you add one more 12, that would be 72. So what we're practicing is thinking about how can you manipulate these numbers to make them easier for you to solve. Morning duck. Here's another one. What's the total mass of eight 25 gram mountain bluebirds? Anytime I see a 25, I think about quarters. And when I think about quarters, it helps me think about, um, it, it's, a, it's a fast, um, it's a fast fact for me because I can think about how many quarters equal a dollar, things like that. So I like to think of 25s in groups of four. So if I have eight 25s, and I'm gonna write it out for you, but I want you to think about this in your head. If I have eight 25s, oh my gosh, I cannot write today. I know that four of them is 100, so if I have eight of them, I have 200. Um, and you, so what you did is you split up the eight into four and four. So four 25s is 100, and then you added a second one. So the answer would be 200 grams. And then you can also use mental math to help you solve this one. What is the mass of 21 six gram hummingbirds? Well, I don't, 21 sounds pretty intimidating. So I'm going to split it up into 20 and one. So now my multiplication is 20 times six and one times six. Well, 20 times six is like two times six, which is 12, but it's gonna be 120. So I'm working with 20s and not two. And then one times six is six. So my answer is 126 grams. Okay, Let's, okay. try one more. The question is, could five house sparrows have a greater combined mass than a morning dove? Could they have a great, a less, a combined mass that is less than a morning dove? Okay, so we need to look at pages 277 first to find out what the range of sparrows could be. I'd like you to open your math journals to page 281, okay? And we're gonna do problem number one together, and then you're gonna finish this page by yourself. Then you're gonna upload it to Seesaw when you're finished. Okay, it says, the mass of one American white pelican is about eight kilograms. What is the mass about of 16 of these eight kilogram pelicans? So the problem that I'm solving here is eight times 16. How could I do this in my brain? What could I do to the 16 to make this easier? Well, I could split up the 16 into 10 and six. And I know that eight times 10, my thinking is eight times 10 equals 80. And I'm thinking eight times six equals 48. And when I add both of those together, I get 128 kilograms. So what you're going to do for problems two and three, after you write in what I just did, for number one, so you're going to solve those problems similarly. Think about how you can break the numbers apart so that you can do the calculations in your head. So to recap, you're going to finish page 281 and you're going to upload it to Seesaw. Okay, then you are going to do the math box on page 282. And that does not need to go into Seesaw. And then finally, there's an extra practice sheet to do. Um, and that's going to be able to be printed out from our website. And you do not have to upload that to Seesaw, but I would like you to try it. Okay, so you can print it and try. Finally, I have a video up that I created about how to play extended multiplication top it please watch the video. It's really short. 
Um, it is going to be one of the things I'm going to ask you to do on Friday, how um, to play that game. Um, so you can watch the video in preparation for Friday. Good luck with everything.